please be aware this will be a spoiler filled discussion. Hello and welcome to the Minority Arts Appreciation Society where we're ticking all the boxes and providing a minority perspective in popular internet discourse. I'm Tilly, my pronouns are she and her and I lead the film discussions. I'm Josh, my pronouns are he and him and I lead the music discussions. Today we're capping it off, we're capping it off at last. Uh, the second film trilogy well, that we've ever covered on this podcast and that is the what a what name did we go for for this again? The Mariachi trilogy, or the uh, Desperado trilogy, or the Desperado. And honestly, I think I think the Desperado trilogy is like more is more true because. I, I, but it's about the Mariachi. This is it's name. about the Mariachi, but to me, to me, like post Desperado, <laughs> <laughs> post Desperado, like this trilogy is is a different beast. I feel he made that first film, and then he was like, right. What now? And when? Uh, he went in a different direction. Like, I think we talked about in Desperado. There was a, there was a fork in the road there, and he he took he took a fork. Uh, yeah. He took the Desperado fork. Do you know what I mean? I do you think this film feels more like a sequel to? Uh, it feels more like a sequel to Desperado than uh, than El Mariachi, at 100%. least in terms of like tone and flavor. Yeah, for sure. Like, and and that's honestly what I was looking forward to was mm. just. I th- I mentioned this last time was just a true embracing of uh, this new mode because before I, you could you could tell the budget wasn't quite there in the last one. It, not in terms of like the action scenes themselves, but just in the frequency of them. Uh, whereas this, I mean, they got. They got fucking Johnny Depp for this. They got like beginning of peak career Johnny Depp. And I mean and Willem Dafoe, but that's a whole whole other kettle of fish. Uh but here we are. Uh crashing. Ava Mendes. Ava Mendes is pretty big. At least in the early two thousands. Oh yeah, that's true. I think I think I forget, yeah, because she's just not so big now. Yeah. Uh but yeah, here we are, crashing and scraping uh, over the finish line, it feels like. Oh, she's uh, dating Ryan Gosling. I know, I know, I think they're married. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry for derailing this, please go on. <laughs> this is now the Eva Mendes podcast. <laughs> uh, welcome no, um, to the uh, Eva Mendes podcast. Hey, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Eva Mendes Souls trilogy. Uh, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so we're just going to talk about Cap off our thoughts on this film, but then also uh, on the trilogy as a whole, obviously, mm. as well as our man, our man Robert Rodriguez, yeah, our beautiful boy. Um, yeah. So yeah, with that all out of the way, uh, mm. Josh, are you feeling any more positive about uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico than you were Desperado? No, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is like, man. This film is ex- profoundly disorienting to the point where watching it, I was like, did I miss a film? Like, <laughs> like you know, is this a quadrilogy? It's so weird that the premise no. of this film that, you know, uh, our hero is getting vengeance for his um, dead lover. It's so weird that that happens <sighs> off screen, right? And that's like a, a thing that's dripped <laughs> throughout the film. Right? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? Keep going, keep going. It's like if um, you're watching like J- the Born Two, and it starts at like an hour <laughs> in, and eventually it's revealed that you know the woman from the first film uh, died in yeah. the car at the beginning, <laughs> and that's why this film is happening. It's an extremely bizarre choice. Um, to the point where I, I feel I, like I, you can I, watch this on its own. I wonder if it's like intended to be a standalone ish. No, I'm 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 really with you. It's it's such a strange choice, particularly given how, uh, that she's given second billing in the cast. Mm. Like, what were they what were they thinking? And like the first time they hinted it, because she has an action scene before it's revealed that she's properly dead. Yeah. Um, I was like, this is a this is like a dream sequence, or maybe it's like foreshadowing, you know? Yeah. But no, it just it just happens, and I I. I this kind of leads me to my main point that I I think 
Rodriguez has a fundamental disrespect for his own trilogy. Um, <laughs> seeing in the opening credits that Danny Trejo was back, and just instantly knowing, well, he's not going to be playing the same character because he died in the last film. Very <laughs> unambiguous. And then I was like, wait, did he die? I saw like. No, it, I, my was, <laughs> like, I was. I was. I was happening? equally gaslit by uh, <laughs> the film in this moment because, yeah, I was like, "Wait, no, did I make that up?" And no, he died. He's a different character who also does very little in terms of relevance for the plot or just like general mariachi trilogy hijinks. He just kind of is there. Yeah, and I, I greatly dies. prefer. The little we got of him in the last film, I, I really preferred that version of the character. No, that that was uh, fantastic. Like yeah. the, the the cool throwing nut. No, he was he was a great time. Didn't like when he killed Steve Buscemi. But ironically, that, like this film makes me appreciate El Desperado so much more than I did at the time. For real, like yeah, I look back and I'm like, I this is, this film is just so much wasted potential, like. <sighs> I, 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 <laughs> come on, dude. Like, we've got no. William Defoe, Mickey Rourke, Johnny Depp, all of them just giving the most mid performances for what should be the hammiest shit ever. And they're just no, like, see... they're just muttering. Okay, <laughs> yeah, this? no. Like, no, but I think I, that that's why that brings me back to, uh, like, my main, my main idea of this film, which is as as it it spits in the face of audience expectation and understanding it it does not want you to like conceive of it no it like <laughs> refuses tropes in like i honestly no like i don't think it's genius and i don't think it's good <laughs> but like the fact that johnny depp is like like huge billing and like he's he's really set up but then he just gets his eyes like drilled out and he can't <laughs> walk for like all of his action scenes i i have to give that like i don't know not 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 any intentional credit but like wow like i was never bored i, I was never i bored. know what you mean but i don't think once upon the time in Mexico is the time to be like understated. Like it's a really <laughs> weird time <laughs> I, to, I, to I set don't up the character that. as like a psychopath who kills the chef because the food is too good. And he, because he, he, he was reminding me of like um of um Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men. Like uh -huh. he, he lives in their own weird like nihilistic. Kind of morality system almost like a two-face you know yeah he, he even explains it as well he says like and then and then the film doesn't really play with that tension he's just kind of calming calming cia guy yeah, and, the... <laughs> like, he, he never gets to go off or go ham or have like a big johnny depp moment he just kind of <laughs> the... some kid and then mutters to the lady and then it was cool when he got his eyes drilled out. I like the the artwork of him and the bleeding eyes. But even that, that he just kind of fumbles cool. around. I don't know. But the amount the <laughs> amount of man people that, that that man is able to kill like with no eyes is is endlessly hilarious. Num I have two things. Number one, saying that this film is understated um, was th was not what I expected. Uh, from, Compared to last time, this from, is. No, oh, this is so much more over the top. And second of all, no way, uh, no, no way. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but like the part where the mariachi like <laughs> climbs up the walls of the cathedral mm. and then um smashes the guitar open and retrieves a double barrel shotgun and shoots the guy. Like, there's some great stuff. In this movie, but but, we, but on, Johnny Depp, okay, on, on sure. Johnny Depp very quickly. On on Johnny Depp very quickly. Moments like where he, like the film's lack of consistency and commitment, like actively boosts my enjoyment because now moments where he just like goes into the like I was like he's not 
he's because he's not that crazy like he's not played that crazy moments where he just walks into the kitchen and shoots a random guy uh instead of being like a kind of corny like crazy moment are just the sign like the messaging of an insane writer director who like juggled way too many elements and it's 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 just hilarious to me like i i kind of could as it's happening i, I you're not really sure it's even happening i don't know i i i, I see what I you mean it's a good unhinged. but they don't again they don't commit to this character he is just kind of like the charming american for the rest of the that's the only scene really where i feel like um his personality <laughs> feeds into the type of action he does yeah like um i guess when i say this one was understated i feel like um we never won up the last film really i don't think i don't think anything here is more wild than like the third act of desperado in which we get like he brings his troop of guitar players who can also who are also like master combat and you know they really have fun with like all the different ways you can kill people with like a guitar case and i just i don't think this is upping that ante i don't think breaking someone over the head with like a, a guitar case and putting a gun out of it is the same as you know the guitar case being a big you know turret gun i i, I just what I, about it's not giving me the goods what about the guitar case being a remote controlled car that you can remotely detonate and blow up a turret? That is good. That made for that moment this entire trilogy. And when it started happening, I was I was overjoyed. Um but I don't know. The thing I got out of this was kind of seeing Rodriguez truly uninhibited and uh um, and sort of by uninhibited, I mean basically completely unhinged, uh, and truly shown for like the the. I think he's a hack, basically. Like he is a hack, um, and and I got this almost like really satisfying feeling from watching this and being like, "Huh." So like he really just has no fucking idea what he's doing like at all he can just like make everything look really cool but he he is just totally clueless uh and at the same time i was i took a perverse enjoyment of just the ridiculousness of everything on screen i don't think this is I really don't see that. I don't see this as him at his most unhinged. Like, this isn't as campy or as fun as, like, his portion of From Dust Till Dawn. This isn't as wild as Shark Boy and Lava Gal. Or, you know, Lita Battle Angel. Like, this, part... this is tame compared to, like, Spy Kids 2. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> the part where... The... No, okay. the part where <laughs> they jump out of the window and, like, start progressively, like swinging each other down the building all while <laughs> being shot and i i think like moments like that are so hilarious because the whole time this this trilogy has kind of kept like a certain level of of like okay i understand why they're not dead right now like mm. i've got i'm with you but in this moment they're just like hanging there and and that marked the part where i realized that this was i think i think the difference between this film uh and desperado is 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 essentially that just no commitment to any kind of like f n cohesion in terms with reality uh and i i i applaud rodriguez for like working his way up through the American film industry, uh, getting a huge budget and just like bullshitting the whole thing away on on what is essentially a, I think, a unself aware parody. Like I just can't help but simultaneously have no respect for, but also love this man. 
I see what you mean, but I don't. I I think I don't think that's a measured response to this. In in comparison to how bored you were in Desperado, I think Desperado does everything this does and better. Uh, with with characters that are oh. fun and good. Come on, like nothing here is as fun as Steve Buscemi and Desperado. I I don't. There's no single kind of vehicle that I'm like more entertained by. Even when I'm the phone, this film. I, yeah, no, to like, Willem Dafoe was anything to do, And then they, like, remove his face. Why would you do that? It that was really weird as well. Like, I was really it's confused. It, it, um, <laughs> but I, but it's, I was expecting choices. more, man. I thought we were going to get, like, globetrotting espionage shit. Uh, but, but it's kind of the same... No, okay, I, I am with you there, like... And if it's a parody, then it's not, it's not funny. I'm... Like, I'm <laughs> hmm. I'm with you on the the scale thing, 100%. Mm. Like, I think I was really looking forward to true, insa- like, like a, the, a Mission Impossible level plot, but with the, the kind of perspective of the Mariachi films so far. Mm. But my, like, Steve Buscemi isn't in Desperado that much, and there's a lot of slow shit in Desperado. Like, that middle... That middle section goes so slowly, and I think, I think if you watched this first, because watching these films in order means nothing. Like it means nothing at this point. There is, you know, in the fir- in the second film he's recast, and in the third film, like the whole narrative of the second film is killed off screen. Like there's no point watching these in order. I think if you watch this one first, I think it's. But I think you would feel differently because I think it does. I think it definitely does do a lot more than Desperado, but Desperado like jumped the shark first, if that makes sense. Um, Because I don't know. I just think there's that there's just objectively like more going on in this film. And when nothing, when no action is happening in Desperado, I'm so bored. I, I I feel the same way in this film though. Like, um But there's always action. But there's always something going on. But so so much of this is like following uh <laughs> the president talking to someone and then Johnny Depp goes and like has some some meeting with someone where he's vaguely threatening. Uh there's still a lot of like boring talky stuff here. I I, I don't I don't think this is like better paced than the last film. Um I think I think that hmm I like Johnny Depp's arm. I think it's funny <laughs> that he has this fake arm. That was <laughs> for the whole film. I'm like, what is the function of this fake? I don't see how fake this is arm. like helpful <laughs> in any way. I don't see like how having a prosthetic Sekiro arm hidden underneath your real arm is Shinobi tool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I and then I was satisfied with the payoff with the arm um, at the end when he used it um, oh, to but kill it, the guy. It's another, <laughs> it's another moment where like someone just walks up to him instead of just shooting, fucking shooting him, so he can kill them. It's so weird. Like, why would you, why would you take this, like, a list star, give them no action? And then when you do take away their eyes and legs and like stick them to this child <laughs> who who brings them guns, it's I don't know, like stuff like that is so so entertaining to me. Like I'm so glad I can watch a film where that happens. And I I think Desperado is revealed more now as like a bit too middling. It doesn't have that kind of stuff. And Steve Buscemi, like I said, he's not in it that much. Another another thing of this film, I found it um, surprisingly hard to follow. Uh, yeah, there is a no, scene yeah. when Johnny Depp <laughs> like sits down with um with Ava Mendes and like just starts doing some exposition, and you start seeing the key characters of the plot. Right, uh, I, I had to rewind it. I was like, wait, so so the, there's a coup happening. Johnny Depp is yeah. gonna want doesn't want the coup to succeed, but also wants to protect uh, the drug boss, and also wants to run away with money, and wants to team up with 
FBI? As the CIA. It's a fucking mess. It's, it's a fucking <laughs> mess. Like, Dude, I wasn't sure if that was also, if that was a joke. Like, if, if the whole I, conceit of 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 you know, the convolution of the plot was a joke in itself. But see, that that's where this film reaches joy for me is not being able to tell at any moment what he's trying to do. Um, and I think that is a so bad you so bad it's good enjoyment. Like, this is a very ironic i guess no i don't even want to say ironic because it's not like uh i'm not i don't feel like i'm laughing at this film and i know mm. i know you kind of have to say pe- people always say uh that it's that it's only so bad it's good if if it's not like trying to be bad mm. and i think that for me this film breaks that because I, d- I do genuinely believe that it's very well shot and has some very, like, well, like, pretty and good looking, <clears throat> excuse me, good looking shots in it. But also, just um, more fundamentally, I don't feel, I, I, I don't feel like this is m- made without laughing at itself. That doesn't take away any of my enjoyment. Like, I'm ne- I never, I never like, you know, when, when you watch a film that's trying to be bad, to be funny, it's, it's, I, I don't know if you've ever done it, ever watch one, ever watch one of those films. It's, it's actually, it's so painful. There's this like obnoxiousness to it, uh, in, in just how little regard it has for like actually trying. Yeah. Uh, well, you need a balance. Like I was thinking about, um, Until Dawn, the game is a good example of, it is purposefully like, doing a trite kind of slasher teen movie yeah. plot. But like the choice system in Unto Dawn is actually genuinely quite good and how you can role play in that game and how you're basically playing the director. There are like lots of good moments of pause of like, how would my character react in this moment? Am I gonna be consistent or am I gonna try to be ethical? Uh there's that kernel of like goodness that yeah. that makes like the haha, isn't this kind of funny and silly I, I feel more gracious towards it. And I think yeah. I think in a film like this, the kernel of goodness uh, would be like genuinely exhilarating action. Like I think Robert Rodriguez generally does think this film is like really cool and these characters are really cool and like they're silly and fun, but like they are cool. Like it, it, it's this trilogy is all about the rule of cool. Like why why does you know, why do we have to have an arm that detaches? Because it's cool. <laughs> It's not really like it doesn't yeah. tell us anything about the character. It's just it's cool, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think after three films, it when when we're not escalating to a point of like complete obscenity, you know, as we do from Spikers One to Spikers Three, the journey to Spikers Three is incredible in my opinion. You know, to get uh-huh, into that virtual uh-huh. war that happens at the end of Spikers Three, from the humble beginnings of Spikers One, it's like the road from Iron Man to Endgame. That's yes, I don't want to compare this <laughs> to that. But yeah, you need that genuine escalation for the joke to remain funny. And I don't yeah. I don't think that this pushes the envelope from the last one enough to kind of keep me hooked into at least from yeah. from like an action or ob- ob- obscene kind of standpoint. What's really lacking in this film is Antonio Banderas has nothing to do. Like he has nothing to do. Mm. At least in the in the last ones, he could like play off of like his love in his love interest. Uh, oh wait, I, God, I said last films. Oh, God, yeah, I fucking well, hate this. Yeah, last one you had he was playing off of Steve Buscemi and Sama Hayek. Sama and Hayek, there was some really yeah. good chemistry. Oh, not really good chemistry, but there was like <laughs> some good like irony of him being kind of hapless around Buscemi uh, and then yeah. having to kind of buff up and be cool around the villains. And here he just really feels like cardboard. Like, uh, yeah, he's really lame. And I get that he's meant to be sad because his love is, is dead, but you should have had like long soliloquies about how she's dead that were like melodramatic and and I like took more joy in in the melodrama rather than um I don't yeah. know, it feels kinda of mooted here. Well it, it it seems like it's genuinely going uh mm. for emotions, uh which ad- adds another layer, like I said, of like what the fuck is this film? Yeah. Uh, I I don't understand you. 
uh and because yeah because yeah like it 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 seems to be taking itself pretty pretty glumly actually <laughs> like you're mm. you seem like you're really supposed to miss this character like you said like like jason born comparison i think was like perfect like because if that had happened in the in fucking the born it's the second born film born's supremacy supremacy yeah yeah that had happened i'd be so pissed off um <laughs> I'm so glad I don't care about these characters. But yeah, like in this one, I just think at this point, he has no idea what this character is. He said that I I was just looking at the plot on Wikipedia and apparently he wanted this to be like this trilogy is the good, the bad and the ugly, uh, which has kind of a less of a focus on on that trilogy as protagonist. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Which that is... trilogy, so I, I don't know if it's like an no, ongoing no. plot or if it's uh, episodic. I assumed it was episodic. And I think it is. I think it's. I don't think it is. I think it's like um, a sequential trilogy, mm-hmm. uh, which is such a strange comparison to make. Um, and I don't know. There's a there's a really sick part of me that's left wondering if, if Rodriguez understands like entertainment on a level that I don't, um, and that's a horrifying thought. Well, that I that I don't think is that I don't think is true. Yeah, but it's there. Well, I I again like my pet theory for the last couple of episodes has been Rodrigo is like the shitty horse drawing of Tarantino. Um, yeah, and if you compare, like, I don't know, think about um, the way the grief of um, Banderas's character here is portrayed compared to like the Bride and Kill Bill. Yeah, like, I think um... Kill Bill is a really funny and silly film. Like, like there's yeah. so much dumb shit in that film. The, the pussy wagon, right? Like that's how it starts. And um, mm-hmm. and and the beginning of part two with the bride driving in the car and giving a really like you know pulpy monologue. About yeah. you know what her mission is, who she's going to kill, why it's happening. It's emotional, right? Because Uma Thurman's a great actress, but like the actual lines are funny and pulpy and like comic booky. Um, mm. And I I want that kind of energy here. I this film feels um a bit tired. I don't can't explain it, but everyone looks tired. Um, like I I need I need zest. I need um. I, 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 yeah, Johnny Depp yeah. was no was nowhere near as fun as I thought he would be. This um, is Willy Wonka for crying out loud. I, yeah, I know. I, I, I don't know. Have fun. Yeah. I don't know how how this guy how this performance happened in a Rodriguez film. Mm. I another thing I don't understand is like I can't imagine what it's like to be a Rodriguez and kind of come up at the same time as Tarantino and like <laughs> and and. If you look at like like I don't like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but mm. like if you look at Tarantino's most recent film and Rodriguez's most recent film, which is like <laughs> the Rodriguez Cinematic Universe kid superhero movie, um, like I I I wonder what that's like for him. I wonder how that makes him feel. Uh, I hope he's okay because I don't think I would be. I don't think I'd. Ha- I don't think I'd feel very good about myself. I don't know. I I have lots of faith that if I watched the Lead to the Battle Angel, I'd like it more than this. It looks a bit more ambitious. And oh yeah, weird. that's true. It's a it's a manga adaptation that keeps the anime eyes and like it's half animation, God, half not. Like it, that's kind of interesting. I don't know. I, he's I, fucking crazy, <laughs> man. It's got Christoph he's, Waltz in it. I don't he's know. fucking insane. He's so. <laughs> There's no, there's no one like it. Like, we got to admit, there's no, I feel like there's no one like Robert Rodriguez. I, I, mm. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no one, no one. I think the weirdest thing in Rodriguez is is the detour he takes into kids' films and like how that influences yeah. the trajectory of his filmography. That's like the weirdest turn that happens. Uh, um, because that seems antithetical to like the pulpy stuff he's super into. Obviously, you know. He spent like a few years of Tarantino just making pulp films and trying to bring yeah. it back, right? Um, I, I want to know what happened there. Yeah, kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> That's what this trilogy's all been about. 
Well, I think I think <laughs> we can. Yeah, I I I think I'm I'm done on this trilogy. I'm glad we covered it. Uh, but I think I think we've said everything we could say about this film, and it's time to do our recommendations. Uh, Josh, where are you at? Yeah, I, I'd give this a, a a decent not recommend. I think that the first two films get the point across of uh, what yeah. this trilogy is capable of. And I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think this is bad. I just don't think it's like exceptional or interesting enough to to, to need to be watched if you've seen those first two films. And I, I think that second film is pretty fun. And as you heard, Tilly likes the first film. So someone in the middle of us, I think, would enjoy both of those. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I just don't think this offers much more. Uh, I don't know. I, I, it, it left me very cold. Uh, I think I'd give this... this I, it's hard to recommend this. I think I'd give this a decent recommend for... A context. I think I did this with Desperado as well. I can't remember. If you're hanging out with friends and you want to put on a dumb film, just watch this movie. In my opinion, if you're going to watch any film from this trilogy, just watch this movie. Uh, I think to kind of get into our thoughts on the trilogy overall, um, it's I I. I wanted to see if there was something here of like genuine artistic, like cr- just creativity. Basically, yeah. I was seeing if I wanted to see if there was any creativity here. Uh, and although they've like, although I truly believe that Robert Rodriguez is like a really weird director, like I with like weird intentions, and I don't think. I think as much as I don't understand what he's trying to do, he doesn't understand what he's trying to do. As like interesting, I kind of find him for some reason. Um, the films themselves are just like not that, and the 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 most like reduced down to actual reality. Yeah, the most I can say about this trilogy to like a person who. I'm not doing a podcast with or like doesn't want to talk about Robert Rodriguez. The most I can say is, yeah, just watch the third one. It's funny. Um, and, and I find that a little bit sad. Like I wanted, I wanted way more heart. Like I just wanted something. Um, I wanted one character that I genuinely liked, like genuinely maybe a bit cared about. Uh, yeah. and I, I don't think that ever happened. Well, wow. I, I think Desperado is a genuinely good film. I, I, I felt, I felt weird when Steve Buscemi died. I like that guy. Um, <laughs> I, I think, I think the thing of this trilogy that is meant to be like why it's important for cinema is like the mariachi style, right? Like Robert Rodriguez uh, is shooting, editing, writing, directing, and making the s- soundtrack for this. Like, um, that is fantastic. It's such like an yeah. art or singular vision kind of thing. Uh, it's if it's meant to it's meant to feel like a homespun action film, right? Um, yeah. So I guess that is that would be like if someone's interested in that kind of thing, that's a selling point, surely. Yeah, which which I completely am. Like I I I think I kind of forget that when I'm talking about these films, like how much of this is just straight from him. And how that I I think that means something on its own. Like it doesn't mean it's good. It just I think it just means something. Mm. Um. So that's another trilogy done. Uh, are there any more thoughts you have on Rodriguez or the trilogy? No. <laughs> uh. Well, <laughs> I think that's. I, you know what? I, I didn't think you would. <laughs> I think I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um. I I enjoyed this though. Like I. I enjoyed watching these films. I enjoyed talking about them. Um, it's a trilogy. I'm I'm happy. I can say I've seen. Uh, Josh, what are we talking about next week? Yeah. So for the next few music episodes, we're having finished uh, our big retrospective on Dragon Newsome. We're going to get back to the 2021 boxes and get through the summer of that year. Yeah, from June to August. 
Mm -hmm. uh, begin beginning with um, Disco by Mike, the uh, abstract hip hop rapper. Possibly like the only hip hop album I've seen with hypnagogic pop as like a tag for one of the genres. So that's really exciting. Epic. <laughs> yeah. Epic. Okay. I, I'm kind of hyped for that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you've listened to every episode of the trilogy review, uh, thank you. And I am concerned for your well being. Leave uh, us a comment. Yeah, Tell us what your favorite part of the trilogy was. Who was your <laughs> yeah. favorite character and which twist shocked <laughs> you the most? Tell us uh, which favorite exploitative shot of a woman was your number one. I got to Thanks. say, th this film was less horny than the last film. It was way less <laughs> horny. It was way less horny. Which, I mean, uh, good or bad, it's up to you. Yeah, comment, let um, us know if that's good or bad. Yeah, let us know in the comments <laughs> below if <laughs> on the qualitative effects of less horniness in the Mariachi trilogy. But alright, thanks very much for listening. Goodbye. Bye.